Hey guys, so recently I made a video where I was poking fun at the new Woke Lord of the Rings. I, I thought the idea of a Woke Lord of the Rings was funny to me, so I wrote a script about it really drunk, and then I filmed all of it really high, and then I put it all together, and um, you know, you kind of got to expect that when you jump into the middle of something like this, that there's going to be extreme backlash, and uh, yeah, I guess I was kind of asking for that, because I wanted to get into the middle of it, and get in the middle of it, I did. Here's popular British internet personality Sargon of Akkad, who was not pleased with my video at all. Hey, how's it going? It's been a while since I've done a late night stream. Honestly, it's because I go to bed at like 11.30 these days. So I'm kind of tired, but I saw a video that kind of bugged me, and I thought I'd just, uh, just do this out of the blue. I could tell he's upset, so I'm going to be respectful and sit down and listen and learn. I was watching Arch's uh, stream, which is probably still going on right now, so sorry, Arch. Uh, a friend of mine, obviously, and uh, I saw he was talking about a video by this tomato called... Sorry, I shouldn't insult him. I don't, I don't know this guy. Nah, that's cool, bro. You can call me a tomato. I don't even know what that means. Uh, internet comment etiquette with Eric. And... He had done a video complaining about people complaining about Lord of the Rings obviously being woke. And so I haven't really watched this guy's channel before. I've heard of it, but I've never watched any of the videos really. Um, and so I watched this video and it seems to be literally him complaining, very, a very surface level complaint about someone and then complaining about the comment section. <laughs> it's like, right. And in this video, he has the audacity to complain that the quartering, Jeremy, uh, another friend of mine, by the way, uh, has like goes through news articles and comments on th events that are happening. And he's like, oh, yeah, that just seems lazy. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what he's doing seems really lazy. Like, dude, don't forget to get your advert in. <laughs> like, come on. Okay. I, everyone, everyone else is lazy, buddy. It's it's them. Damn, he smoked me there. We all know how lazy my adverts are. But okay, so the entire premise of this video was him essentially sarcastically portraying um, a MAGA chud, an anti woke MAGA chud. Uh, I, well, I don't have my MAGA cap. It's on the floor. Fuck. Uh, should have got it for the bit. But anyway, he's portraying this anti woke MAGA chud, um, and. The idea that anyone could have any complaints about woke remakes other than they just hate black people is just off the table and there's nothing more to talk about. Like, literally, no one has a legitimate complaint other than the fact that they don't like black people, which is, of course, not a legitimate complaint, but they're just bigots, is what he's saying. Uh, they love white people, they hate black people, and they're obsessed with race. The people commenting on the woke Lord of the Rings, they're obsessed with race. They can't stop thinking about race. I mean, it's the only critique that Eric has brought up of these people's views. But it's them who have the problem with race. No, he's right. I did say in that voice that if you don't like the new Lord of the Rings, then you're racist. I absolutely, I drew a line in the sand and I said that if you're against this new Lord of the Rings movie show or whatever it is that I don't give a shit about, then you must hate black people. And I, that's on me. That's my bad. I shouldn't have said that. What I should do is go back and delete that line from the video. And if I do go back and I can't find that line anywhere in the video, then that must mean I never said that shit and this guy's just putting words in my mouth. I'm sure there's a term for that. There's a term for that, right? And I just, I was just struck by how embarrassingly American this perspective is. And this is why I call this American ideological colonization, because that's what this is. And it's gross. So Eric obviously knows nothing about like wokeness or, you know, social justice, insectionalism. Ah, just whatever I pick up from browsing Reddit all day. He's never read an essay by Kimberly Crenshaw. He's never read anything by Derek Bell or any of the other people. Yeah, he's got me dead to rights there. Who explicitly state what their intentions are and why they're doing it. So he doesn't know any of the things that underpin what uh, the left-wing social justice movement is about. And so when they wear the mask saying, well, look, we, we're just here for black people and anyone who disagree with us, well, they just hate black people. Well, why would I expect Eric to know any different? And of course, I don't. Now, I know what you're thinking. How's Eric going to cut all this footage up to make Sargon of Akkad look bad? Well, the answer is, I'm not. 
I mean, this is Sargon of Akkad we're talking about. People take him out of context all the time just to make him look like the worst person in the world. I don't want to do that. I'd rather just play his entire video because I'm too stupid an American to know what parts are important. However, I do think that there are some legitimate concerns that can be raised that, I mean, I'm not expecting a sincere response from Eric. You know, don't at me, Eric, because I don't expect you to say anything of any value. Oh, well, now that's just mean, Sargon of Akkad. But I think it's instructive for people who may watch his video and may perhaps also watch this one. Uh, yeah, I don't think you want to hear from my students, buddy. Because there is actually a great depth of ideology behind the terms diversity and inclusiveness, and they're being done for a reason. And I think this is the thing that is worth focusing on most. It is the will behind what is going on. There is a will at play, Eric, and the problem with this will is that it's quite nefarious, and the people manifesting it are actually open and explicit about what their intentions are. I like that he keeps mentioning my name. That's how I know he's about to say something important. And I don't like their intentions. And so when they get their hands on a new property, I mean, they don't actually have the rights to Lord of the Rings. This is, it's a very, I can't remember exactly what it was about Lord of the Rings. They had the rights to be a very small slice of the, uh, the canon. Uh, and they've they've done their best to ruin that as well. It didn't take long for them to, I think actually someone else got that here. Um, yeah, the, there we go. The the controversial change is they're basically compressing a thousand years of canon history of Lord of the Rings into one series, and it's like, right. Yeah, no, that sounds like it's going to suck, man. I feel bad for the fans on this one. I'm not one of them. The problem is that when you see someone who you know has a nefarious intent acting upon something which you cherish you tend not to be very happy with that. And whichever way this nefarious intent manifests itself will be the thing that you point to and say, that is something I don't agree with because it wasn't the intent of the, the authorial voice of the person who wrote it is being disrespected. And you might say, well, why do you care? What difference does that make? And the thing is, the author's intent actually matters. I don't agree with the death of the author, uh, and the, or at least not entirely anyway, there's a lot to talk about that, which I'm not going to go into now. <laughs> Refuse to explain myself, carry on. I will. So Sargon of Akkad made some perfectly reasonable points here, and I myself have gotten upset about uh, shitty adaptations in movies and TV shows. Uh, most recently, that Dark Tower movie, that was a piece of shit, and it had nothing to do with the black guy playing the canonically white main character. In fact, that actor was the best part of the whole movie. But if I had said that this movie looks like shit on one of those YouTube trailers back in the day, would I have been called racist? Sargon, you are making me think, brother. Um, there's a lot to talk about because the purpose of a work, I mean, just very briefly, actually, if you take away an author, then you can't really have a story, right? The You don't have an aesthetic experience where you are engaging with a piece of material, a piece of art, a piece of someone's work in the same way as you do have an, an aesthetic experience with something that is not created with intent. Okay, I think what he's trying to say here is whatever makes the source material so classic, if you just slap its name on something made by a bunch of random people, it's never going to capture that same classic feeling that went into the source material. Wow. You're such a free thinker, Sargon of Akkad. So even if you don't know the author's intent, you know that there was an author to it. And the easiest way to distinguish this is looking at natural beauty. Unless, of course, you're a person who believes in God. I happen to be still a dirty atheist. But um, you know that there wasn't a design behind showing you a beautiful scene. Uh, so when you get to a particularly high place, uh, you take in a, a vast sweeping landscape, and you're subsumed in natural beauty. But you don't think that someone directed you to, in, to appreciate this natural beauty. This is just you appreciating nature, and you can discover things about yourself by doing it. What is it that you notice? What draws your attention, and why does that matter to you? And you can learn things about yourself. But the, the thing is, you can't do that when you're reading 
a work of fiction. Yep, you lost me with that metaphor. Because you know that, no matter even if you don't know who the author was, you know that there was an author, and the author put themselves into the work. And in fact, what you can see from the work allows you to derive intent and attitude and concerns and what's important from the author. And this is an important thing. This tells you about what kind of story you're dealing with, what you're supposed to be looking for, what you can learn, what the author is trying to teach you. Again, even if you don't know who that author is, you can still derive all of this. And this leads us to the sort of genuine love and appreciation for a work that you can't really get if the work is being made with the explicit intention to break the spell that a piece of art creates. And that's the problem with Woke Lord of the Rings, Eric. All right, yeah, thanks for clearing that up. Um, so let me, I've got a couple of this. Let me just grab a, grab a few things. So the thing is, this insectional social justice movement, Eric, and I'm not accusing you of being a part of it at all, I'm sure you're not. And even if you are, who cares? Oh, you said my name again. This next part is probably important. Uh, the, the thing is, for anyone who's done any amount of reading of their material, they will come away with the understanding that they believe every piece of material, every artwork, every rule, every law, every principle is racially coded. They believe that things are intrinsically racial. Now, again, this is a very American perspective. It's a very American perspective. I can't think of anywhere else in the world where they really think, maybe in like South Africa, I suppose, you know, other, other countries that have got a history of colonization. Maybe they think like that. But in most of the old world, this is not what people think like. People think in terms of nationality and ethnicity, and they think in terms of religion. They think in terms of ideas and movements. They don't think in terms of just skin color. Skin color is actually not very important in the old world. Um, I mean, where would you, why would you care? You know, what difference does it make? Um, there are much more important things over here. But I suppose we don't have 400 years of racial slavery and the guilt that then comes along with that afterwards. So, okay, I can see from an American position this is important to you, but this actually isn't yours. Because what we're talking about with Tolkien is English mythology. It's old world mythology. It's mythology that speaks to something that is not American and doesn't carry the American cultural baggage. Damn, okay, well now I'm really starting to see from his point of view now why this Amazon original series, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, might not be that good. And doesn't carry the American cultural pathologies and therefore you inserting, colonizing, if you will, this English mythology with your Americanisms is just kind of gross. It's just kind of weird. It makes you guys, Americans, and I'm sorry for the Americans who oppose this stuff, but these guys are a reflection of your culture, and you know this. Uh, it, it makes you look ignorant, at the very least. I mean, again, I mean, look at what I'm criticizing. <laughs> Yeah, it's the Woke Lord of the Rings that makes you look ignorant. I mean, look at this. Well, look at you, you stinky bitch. Nice skunk patch on your beard. Why don't you shave that fucking thing off and stop dyeing your hair because we know that shit doesn't stop at the beard. Oh, I am so sorry. I apologize. That was the American in me. We're obsessed with appearances. I apologize. But like I said, I'm not expecting any kind of sensible response from Eric. Uh, at the very best, I would have been expecting to go, ha ha, here's a, a sarcastic uh, reply that doesn't, address the meat of anything I'm saying. I'm trying to be sensible, but you keep taking cheap shots at me, Sargon of Akkad. But the point is, if we were to take the social justice movement on its face, right, it wouldn't do to the cultural artifacts of other cultures, non-American cultures, uh, what it does to them, right? If Hollywood wanted to and again, raise the stature and status of black people, it wouldn't do this. I mean, this is embarrassing, right? I mean, if I got a knock on my door and they're like, Carl, Carl, quick, 
we need someone to play MLK. And we've decided it's you. That's not how casting works, though. I'd be like, I think you might have the wrong person. I think there are actually legitimate reasons why you wouldn't choose me. Uh, starting first, I- I'm not an actor. B, I think the guy who plays MLK should probably try and look a little bit like MLK. Damn, dude, you could have picked so many other metaphors. And I don't really think I have the forgivability of Robert Downey Jr., okay? We're not going to blackface me up. I'm not Justin Trudeau. We're not, I'm not, zero, zero pictures of me in blackface. I don't want there to be one, really. Uh, again, not that anyone outside of America cares about that. Dude, you just mentioned Justin Trudeau. What the fuck are you talking about? Again, another American pathology. But uh, I, I'm aware that Americans are kind of weird. So I don't intend on falling into that trap. It's about cultural sensitivity, Eric. That's me. But you wouldn't do this to a black person if you wanted them to feel legitimate, right? Because this is done purely under the assumption that black people are somehow inferior to other people. It's disgusting, really. It's absolutely fucking disgusting. It's weird that Americans have got absolutely no knowledge of civilizations from Africa. Like, it's just so weird. Like, they're, they're legitimately... Like, I mean, I would love to see a genuinely decent dramatization of Shaka Zulu. Now, there have been them, but, you know, these were in the, like, 50s and 60s. Uh, okay. So, I would like to see a modern remake. Because, I mean, there's... If I recall correctly, I think he was murdered by his own brother. Like, is there not dramatic... Like, this is like the, the sub-Saharan African Julius Caesar revolutionizes warfare, turns the Zulu from being a backwards, no, nothing tribe into the hegemons of the, the, the area in which they are. And then I think he's murdered by his own brother. And it's like, right, there's a story there. Like, there's a genuine story with human drama in it. But fuck you, black people. Hollywood's going to dress you up in whiteface. What? Because remember, the racial ideologues don't agree that... The stories that white people have told are stories black people could tell. Right? They think that. I don't think this, but they think this. And this obsession with race, you end up tying yourselves in knots over it. But it means that what you're saying is a black person is only legitimate when they're doing this. Like, you're not making movies about Africans. You're making movies about Europeans and putting Africans in their place and saying, right, you've made it. That's the assumption that the European is innately superior and they're not. It's just you're fucking racists and you're too ignorant and shallow to understand this. Okay, I think what he's trying to say is that we should be telling more minority-focused stories instead of having boardroom meetings about the minimum amount of minorities that we can legally have in our existing stories. Uh, did I do that right, Sargon of Akkad? Because by the way, I'm always available. You can hire me for punch-ups. I work freelance. Here's a freebie. You tend to drift. You, you just drift a little bit too much. And also, you've personally insulted me like four or five times now, and I believe that's called an ab homily. It's really gross. It's absolutely despicable. And the thing is, right, it's not that, like, they think this completely, but the assumption is that Europeans, like all of the other races, as far as they're concerned, are just like, this is, well, it's this everything and then white. It, it's like, what are you talking about? You're drip. See, you're drifting. Like, what are you, like, I, I, I guess maybe it's because I'm conversant with history. I just look back at history and think, I mean, you know, almost every empire almost every great people in history didn't come from europe like they're not europeans so you guys have said again it seems just a very new world way of looking at this because for the last 300 years that's been the case but that's a really really small segment of time you know i mean my my culture the culture you guys are currently bastardizing is 1500 years of recorded history so it's like okay you guys are like, oh, yeah, for the last 300 years. Okay, but, like, look at all of the time before that. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's really ignorant. It's really shallow. It's really pathetic. And it's 
really demeaning to black people. Like, I feel bad that these people are going to always... This this woman here is always going to have the the stigma of diversity higher around her. Now, I think that woman's going to get paid an insane amount of money and based on her performance, quite possibly a lot more acting gigs. Right, people are always going to intuit this outside of America. I'm sure in America everyone's like, oh, wow, well, it's so stunning and brave. But it's not. And it's part of an ideological attack against what the intersectionals, the diversity and inclusion folks, consider to be a kind of white hegemony. Because this is racial, like we said, and it can't be uh, made into something else. It can't be appreciated by non-white people in their view, even though Lord of the Rings especially absolutely is appreciated all around the world. And that's what they themselves say. Jesus Christ, how long is this video? Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, what I was, what I was going to get at is the, the point about aesthetics, right? So aesthetics, the aesthetic experience of a piece of work comes from our interaction with it right? It's how we feel about the work. The work itself is non-aesthetic, right? It doesn't have a magical property that is aesthetic, but the non-aesthetic properties in some way that seems to be philosophically indeterminate at this point, uh, combine in our minds to produce a particular kind of experience. And these are not necessary experiences. These seem to be contingent on many different things. And there's no formula that you can say, well, this is the thing. But there are certain predictabilities. For example, a, a really good example of this is Harry Potter, right? J.K. Rowling, when I remember years ago, and I didn't understand at the time why this was significant, but apparently when they were casting for Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling was just like, no Americans. I found that really funny. But why? Right, right, right. The first two Harry Potter movies were directed by an American from Pennsylvania. What she is trying to do is preserve the aesthetic of a British public school, which is actually a private school for Americans. Don't know why we call them public schools, to be honest. But the point is she's trying to portray a posh school, a posh English school. And so she has credentialed English actors or British actors. And these people give a certain sense to the thing because they come from a particular place they exist in a particular time and if you take them and replace them with someone else like americans who also come from a particular place and exist in a particular time and have a different culture a noticeably different culture you get a different aesthetic experience and that's something she was concerned about because she wanted to craft a particular illusion or it was the american director who directed the movie who set the aesthetic it would seem strange if you had a school that was based on english schools to be filled with americans all speaking in their american lingo with their american accents using american words it'd be weird yeah no totally except all but one of the harry potter movies were written by steve cloves an american born in austin texas and the one that he didn't write was written by a jewish guy from new york and it wouldn't give it wouldn't carry the same effect to the audience and the audience therefore wouldn't engage with it in the same way they wouldn't cherish it in the way that harry potter fandom cherishes harry potter and that's the problem that we are seeing with this lord of the rings this breaks the sus willing suspension of disbelief in the in the material you can't look at this and not know that there is a will operating on this property that is alien to the property, has colonized the property, and is trying to do something to you using the property. And that's the problem, isn't it? Okay, I see what he's saying. The reasoning behind Amazon's decision to make a, a beardless black dwarf <sighs> means that Lord of the Rings fans just can't expect any kind of faithful adaptation just in general so it'll probably be disappointing. It's not about the black dwarf, guys. It's about what the black dwarf with no beard represents. It's got nothing to do with race. I get you now, Sargon of a... Because from the group of people who say that everything is political, well, if you're going to deliberately flout the law of the 
work that you're going to be adapting, then I can only assume you think, or not you, Eric, of course, the people there is, they think that this is a political manoeuvre. And I don't really like being acted upon in ways that otherwise would be hidden from me. Like people who try and conceal their intentions and then present it and say, well, don't you love this? It looks very much like a skin suit to me. It's very gross. Like you've torn off Tolkien's work, plastered it over your own faces, and then say, right, now kiss. It's like, sir, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any kind of passionate interaction with something I know is doing something deceitful and has an agenda that I didn't sign up for. You're losing me again, pal. You better say my name or something. Right, that's fundamentally what this is about. It's about integrity and honesty. It's about sincerity. It's about ge being genuine about the thing that you're doing and the respect I expect to have accorded to me as someone who you wish to have an aesthetic experience with your work, that's already gone broken at the very first hurdle i'm like okay well i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do that why would i do that are you like oh you just hate black people oh brilliant take eric brilliant what the fuck did i do you're gonna put that on me all that that's right uh, all of the all of these layers on the now you're right just hate black people me 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 because i'm an american and i literally can't think outside of that frame i mean one of the people that eric uh criticizes is my friend Arch. What, what experience of black people do you think Norwegians have? Like, he lives at, like, God knows what latitude in a tiny Norwegian village. How many black people do you think are there, Eric? Do you think he's just racist? Because it's just all these blacks doing things that he hates. No, idiot. Sargon of Akkad, when did I call that man a racist? I don't recall saying anything of the type. All I did was play his video. And then I left a comment about getting canceled for making babies fight each other. So if you can point out where in the video I call that man a racist, well, then you got me. You got me real good. But until then, you're just putting words in my mouth, and I know that's called something, and as soon as I remember what that term is, I'm going to blast you with it. <laughs> Idiot. This is about the aesthetic fidelity of the piece. This is not about race. These people are merely using race as a way of puppeteering you. As a way of making you be their defender for free, I assume. I mean, you did, at the end of your video, spend a lot of time, like, uh, plugging, like, you know, Amazon's Lord of the Rings. Where is it? Like, even, like, gets up their little fucking thing at some point at the end. But, uh, like, it's just, it's just weird. Where is it? Anyway, there we go. Like, he's like, yeah, go and watch it on September 2nd. He's like, oh, got him. Go and watch it on September 2nd. Yeah, and put on social media. Hell yeah. And, uh, oh, Amazon just paid me. Hey, welcome to America, Sargon of Akkad. We play a little bit differently over here. Are you being paid to say that? Or are you just doing this for them? You have become a conscripted foot soldier for Amazon. Like, you're, you're the... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I hope you're being paid. Because if not, you're doing this for free. You're promoting Amazon. And, like, wasn't this worth, like, a billion dollars, this series? Like, you're... You, but they don't even need to pay you to do this. You're just being conscripted in for free to do this. Because you, cause, cause you just hate black people. <laughs> Just, it's so, like, it's such a useful idiot, mate. Says the European who just gave Amazon their new promo. Uh, I can't think of many flaws in Lord of the Rings, okay? I really can't. It's, it's, it's a brilliantly adapted work, and that is because Peter Jackson was like, look, we're going to stay as faithful to the source material as we can. We are literally, and you can tell, that they lifted parts of the dialogue directly into the, the movie, uh, large parts of the dialogue, and that's to their credit because they want to create the atmosphere that people had and felt the same emotions when they were reading the book. But no, the biggest flaw here, the show is finally fixing Lord of the Rings diversity problem. Think about what that means. Think about what that means, right? 
a thing is defined by what it includes and what it excludes, right? If you have a series, uh, if you're trying to create a mythical fantasy realm or any kind of art, to be honest, all art is about casting spells on the person watching, on the person imbibing it. The person who has the aesthetic experience that you've given them, you've just given them a, a canvas. It's just a canvas with pigments on. It doesn't move. And yet some paintings can feel alive draw you into a story that you can't escape and you go away thinking about oh, yeah, that was resonated with me because the experience is happening in your head but that is the artist's craft to be able to cast this spell that you can't stop thinking about and nope not anymore. All right, so he loves Lord of the Rings. That much is clear. Can't make fun of him for being a fan. Now it's about political representation. And if you don't think it's political, well, again, it's because you haven't read a single thing that the people who promote diversity and inclusion have written. You just don't know anything about these people. It's like, okay, that's fine. I wouldn't expect it. It's pretty esoteric. I mean, it is everywhere. It is trillion dollar corporations shilling out this stuff. Amazon's only putting all their money behind this. I mean, I just, not all of their money, obviously, but like, you know, these huge budgets, the budgets that some countries don't even reach. But, uh, but don't worry, I'm sure there's nothing nefarious going on here. And he doesn't trust the people adapting the material he loves. Cool, man. Yeah, we got that point about 20 minutes ago. So unless you see some more room in my mouth that you could stuff some words into, let's wrap this up. But uh, we've got a we've got a quote. We've got a particular quote. Uh, oh, there's a complaint that female characters are few and far between. Hmm. It's interesting. But, uh, where is where is the quote? Here we go. I think it's this one. So yeah, they knew they'd face a backlash from Tolkien fans over the diverse casting. How did they know? How could they know? Probably because the dwarf women don't have beards. Except Tolkien spends a lot of time fleshing out the cultures and the people who make up those cultures in Middle Earth. In fact, the um, what's the term for it? It was on. It was on the back of my mind before I just came. Before I started the stream, but I've forgotten the term. Uh, sort of the anthropology of the thing, right? As in, when I go to a place, I see the people, and they have distinct characteristics, and from these characteristics, you draw the aesthetics of them. But they they knew that this was going to be the case. They knew. Like here's uh, where's the showrunner, Lindsay Weber, the executive producer. It only felt natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world is actually looks like. Which world? Our world? Why? Why the fuck would we want Lord of the Rings to reflect what the real world looks like? For maximum demographic reach with a universally known IP. Oh right, Sargon, that was a joke. Like, and what... what... what sense does that make? Like... If I want to know what the real world looks like, I'll literally walk outside. This is why I can't understand, like, you know, fat representation and things. So, oh, we don't see any fat people on TV. Oh, don't worry, I see them all day, every day. I am one, right? It's fine. You know, we, we know what fat people are like. They're represented everywhere in real life. You know, I'd like to actually get away into a bit of escapism. Fantasy. Again, the illusion that is cast from a piece of art, the things you put in it matter. But for some reason, Lindsay, the executive producer of a major Hollywood production, doesn't understand any of these things. Like, how can you get to that point without understanding that, right? But she does have an ideology. and Her ideology is inclusivity and diversity. And this means, is, we'll just kind of summarize as social justice. Uh, and this means that this ideology, this new religion, has to be implanted in everything that we do. As she said, Tolkien is for everyone. His stories are about fictional races doing their best work when they leave the isolation of their cultures and come together. W w what? What are we talking about? Why are you bringing that up? Why are you bringing up for everyone this inclusivity? No, it's not. Tolkien isn't for people who don't like Tolkien. Lord of the Rings is not for people who don't like Lord of the Rings. You don't, I mean, there are you know, millions of Lord of the Rings fans, but there are also billions of people who aren't Lord of the Rings fans, and it's not for them. Again, exclusivity is an innate part of all art. You will never create a work of art that satisfies anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that kills in the pitch meeting. Some of the most niche art 
is also some of the most complex. Look at things like um, Lovecraft is a great example of this. Very, very niche, very, very particular in its, in its aesthetic. There are a lot of things that it in excludes and a very narrow band of things that it includes. And that's why the people who find that attractive, the people who derive the aesthetic experience that Lovecraft is going for, find it resonates with them. Now, with Tolkien, it was millions of people because Tolkien was a brilliant writer because he knew what he was trying to achieve. He was trying to achieve a mythos, an epic. And the good thing about an epic is that it doesn't need to be, nothing needs to be done in order to include people. If virtues and vices and conflict resonate, then they will resonate across cultures. And there are plenty of cultures who don't appreciate this. There are plenty of cultures who do. And there are plenty of individuals within each culture who do and don't appreciate it. It doesn't matter. What matters is fidelity to the work. Because without the fidelity to the work, you end up losing the people who do appreciate it without winning over those people who don't appreciate it. And the only people who are satisfied with this are people who are fundamentally racists oh what people who literally can't look at a piece of art and say if there's not a person in that with my skin color then i don't like it well that seems very specific sargon of cod and this is entirely the premise of the social justice movement they don't believe that say black people can appreciate pieces of art with white people in they don't believe that white people can appreciate pieces of art with black people in. And they all think in this American framework where it's literally about race, whereas in most people's framework, it's about fidelity, authenticity. And the thing is, I know that Hollywood knows this, right? This is just the Wikipedia page for Shang-Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings. Oh no, where's where's this going? Which seems to have been well received by its audiences. Like what was the it was like seven point two or something on Met on the uh, Rotten Tomatoes from the audience score, whatever it is. It did quite well, right? But it's weird. The studio was adamant that the actors be of Chinese descent to audition for the character. Why? Didn't they want inclusivity and diversity? It's really weird, isn't it? And it's because, and they know this, that they wanted this to do well in China because it was supposed to be a Chinese-themed Mar Marvel character. And if you want a Chinese-themed Marvel character, well, you need to have something that is authentically Chinese. And if you don't have that, you don't end up casting the spell that is the artistic experience that people look at the thing without any explanation from you, and draw from that what they th they interpret the thing to be. And you don't need to do anything special. All you have to do is try and stay on point with the source material. It's not very difficult. I mean, it's just so obvious that it's just... Most people would have no, no question about it. But why wouldn't you do that? You wouldn't do that. If you had an agenda. All right, I think he's using the Shang-Chi thing to like make a point about how we would never cast a black person for that character. But it's like he's skipping words or something. He's like, he can't get the whole thing out. If you have an agenda, say, making it like, look what the world actually looks like, rather than what Tolkien's world actually is supposed to look like, it's for everyone. Well, what are they saying with this then? This isn't for everyone? What are they saying with this? Is this not for white people? Is this not for black people? Is this not for Indian people or South American people? Is this is just for Chinese people? No, of course not. You know, and no normal person is looking at this going, well, it's just got Chinese people in. I can't watch this. <laughs> no black person probably was like, oh, I can't watch Lord of the Rings. There's not any black people in it. I can't believe for a second that a single person was like that. But this is the political ideology. Yo, man, you got to wrap this video up. And so, you know, you, Eric, just being like, Ooh, you just hate black people. No. This guy's American impression sucks. When you are creating a piece of art, you're creating something that in its own little pocket dimension in your head becomes real. It has coherence. It has internal consistency. And when this is broken then the spell is broken. His gay impression is fantastic. And so when you insert in front of me, oh, I don't know if I was watching, this is why the bloopers are so funny when it's like, 
they're filming the Mandalorian and someone's left a Pepsi on the background or something. It's like, look, that instantly the spell's broken. That can't be explained through the, I mean, I've just made that up. I don't know whether that was actually the case, but there, there have been examples of things like this. And it's like, look, when that's brought in. The show's not out, right? It's just a one minute trailer. Oh, right. It comes out September 2nd, just like uh, Sargon of Akkad said. Right, that's like a high crime in art because this can't be explained within the universe and if you can't explain it within the universe then what you're saying to the people is no you've got to step back and realize you're just watching moving pictures on a screen you're not having this magical experience anymore you're just sat there and you're just giving us the money and the whole effect is ruined and why would i bother you know if you can't be bothered to be internally consistent to the story you're trying to tell why would i bother trying to engage with it and you can be like mm, you're a racist okay Okay, I'm also racist against corporations by that by that measure. Yeah, right on, brother. I'm racist against corporations too. But this is the entire point. And so when you sit there and go, yeah, so we've got this black beardless dwarf princess. I'm like, okay, you can do whatever you like with it. It's not my property. But you can't expect me to believe that you're approaching this in good faith. Like with respect to me as the recipient of your piece of art and saying, yeah, so you're going to like this, aren't you? No. You just hate black people, don't you? No. You are a bad person, therefore, you should give us your money. Bro, this is all that thing with the words in the mouth. It's, ugh, it's a term these guys use all the time. No. None of that is a coherent argument to start with. You made up that argument. Oh my god, what is the term for that? Uh, this is weird. I can tell this is you injecting your politics in front of my face and then saying right enjoy the art and it's like i can't your politics is in front of my face you're deliberately profaning your own art and demanding that i engage in this profanity with you like i'm sorry if you can't treat the thing you're making as sacred and you have to have an other a different agenda like which is i mean and let's let's be fair right it's not like hollywood this it's not like it's our first fucking rodeo is it Eric, right? That's me. I mean, look at this. Just Stacey Abrams as the president of the Earth in Star Trek. Yo, spoilers. Come on. I haven't seen this one yet. Come on. I come on. That's just, could you be any more on the nose about your political agendas? This is like, God, stop punching me in the face. Please. Hi. <laughs> She's, she's like the governor of Georgia or something. And it's like, oh. Yeah, I'd be pissed if I voted against her and she still wound up in my Star Trek, that's for sure. But again, like we can't see that this is the American political ideology of the left that is colonizing yet another thing. It's embarrassing. Shouldn't be done. Uh, ruins the experience. Again, takes me right out of whatever they were trying to craft here. I mean, look at this. Just what am I supposed to be looking at? so grim anyway i mean i don't remember star trek being nearly this dull looking oh yeah the whole show sucks it's not like star trek at all like, again star trek is something i used to love but like this can you even imagine loving this like who loves this no that's true man they fuck up every time they try to remake one of these properties like why can't they get it right racist I certainly love this but uh but anyway i know that you're putting me well they are putting politics in my face when they do this they say it they literally say we are correcting the biggest flaw. We have a political interpretation of Lord of the Rings, and that makes Lord of the Rings flawed. And it's like, yeah, but I don't have a political interpretation of Lord of the Rings. And I don't think it's flawed. I actually think it's rather good in the epic tale that it's telling. Epic in the Aristotelian sense, by the way. Uh, and this is important, and it is entirely my enjoyment of this series is contingent on that and that's why everyone says well this woke shit is garbage and it doesn't work for me it doesn't bring me in it's, like, it's not trying to bring you in what it's trying to do is wear the thing you love as a fucking skin suit oh wow thanks sargon of akkad you've really helped me see through the corporate mechanisms of this amazon original series and then trying to get you to conform to their politics yeah says the guy who ran for parliament get the fuck out of here sargon of a guy the thing is their politics is based on racial consciousness based on the idea that all people in all times and all places are like dug into these uh, 
look up um, the fourth age, by the way. You just did a great video. I watched it this afternoon where the, the people who do this, they believe they're in kind of racial channels. I believe this is Ibram X. Kendi's view they're in racial channels. And essentially, you not need you know, it's very segregationist uh, that these these can't be uh, mixed. And it's I just don't believe any of this. nonsense. OK, I think he's sundowning. This is going to wrap up any second. Right, now. This is all bollocks and it's all very American and you've actively colonized uh, probably, I mean, it, literally, in, I think it was 2012, this was voted England's favorite book. Like, you've colonized one of the most cherished pieces of, uh, cherished cultural artifacts that, that my country has with your fucking American race bullshit. I can't stand it. I don't care about it. Like, I don't, I don't want to see it. I don't want to sit there and be reminded constantly that, by the way, some fucking woke Hollywood dipshit like Lindsay Weber is like going me 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 inclusive me 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 race 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 women 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 just shut up just shut up and talk about Lord of the Rings not your politics I'm not having this nefarious shit happening like I'm not going to pay for it I'm not going to engage with it I'm not going to watch it I'm not interested in it and I don't care what your opinion on that is, Eric. Well, that's a hell of a thing to say 43 minutes into a response. You know, you can have your tepid, two-dimensional, smooth brain take of it. Literally, oh, well, arts just hates black people. A quartering just hates black people. They just like white people. No, maybe they just like Lord of the Rings. Tepid? Wait, smooth brain? What the hell did I do to deserve that? We considered that. Anyway, folks, I'm going to I'm gonna leave it there, I think, because it's late. We've, uh, we've covered the things I think matter. Anyway, take it easy, folks. All right, so that was his entire video. All I left out were like awkward pauses and him repeating himself. So look, I'll be honest, I think if I had covered Woke Lord of the Rings and included some jokes that were about the dwarf women not having beards and other shit they're not including from the lore, well, then maybe Sargon of Akkad wouldn't have woken up in the middle of the night to film himself putting words in my mouth for 43 minutes straight. Anyway, let me write down my thoughts so you can see how they differ from the live-action adaptation that I just filmed. First of all, it's an honor, Sargon of Akkad, to finally have you hone in on my particular brand of woke propaganda. I can't tell you how many people I've made blind to the blatant corporatization and monetization of our planet's many cultures. There are babies born with purple hair every day because their mothers watch my channel while pregnant. I am responsible for at least 500 transgender realizations in 2021 alone, and I hope to break that record this year. If I'm not making a video to call someone or something racist, then I'm not making a video. I drank the Kool-Aid so long ago I can barely feel it influencing my decisions anymore. Because I'm an American leftist comedian and the things I make fun of are low-hanging fruit. It's not my choice of course I've been trained this way by decades of right-leaning comedians being cast out and discounted so that the only clear path to success was to echo progressive sentiments and shit on whatever the opposing political party is saying. It's a comfortable space to be in because everyone congratulates you for your wokeness. But you start to wonder if maybe the other side isn't all full of assholes like you hoped. Like you'd already broadcast yourself saying. How can you take anything back when it lasts forever on the internet? No, you need to find a way to make sure the divide stays put because this is your livelihood. The second you give respect to the other side, you've lost. Everyone will turn on you because all they want is blood. You'll be replaced by someone hungrier and faster, willing to ignore the overlap and keep the teams clearly marked. But I can't help the feeling I had while watching all 43 minutes of this video that perhaps I had you people figured out wrong. This is like that scene in Avatar when the white guy makes friends with the blue Native Americans because he looks like a blue Native American but can never be with them in white dude form. I feel like I can't be with you all in white dude form. We have too many differences of opinion that at least for now will always end in hatred and ridicule. But listen, Sargon of Akkad, in case you just skipped to this part of the video, we can respect each other all we want quietly to ourselves, but the left won't allow me to say you were right about anything. And the right won't let you say the new Lord of the Rings show might not be all that bad, we gotta wait and see. And that's what they call an Abigail's promise, you fucking tomato. And Sargon of a post! Alright, well bad news guys, Sargon of Akkad left this video about 30 seconds in so he could start recording his own response based on what he thinks I was about to say. But that's okay. None of this was actually for me anyway. It was for the people who watch me. Sargon of Akkad wanted to make them question themselves and the lies that they've been fed from their own side. And that's fair. And uh, speaking of which, to all you Sargon of Akkad fans, welcome to my channel. Maybe stick around for a little bit because I'm going to get you all. 
Two more videos, and next thing you know, you're going to be spraying cops in the face at Antifa rallies while Netflix sucks all the woke search history from your fucking browser. That's just how it's going to work. Oh, and Sargon, next time you make a response to one of these, let's tighten it up. That was way too long. Just tighten it up, man. Tighten it the fuck up. Learn to write this shit beforehand. You, oh, you, oh, you, you love words so much. Well, then tighten it the fuck up. Maybe watch the whole video. You fucking tomato. Piece of tomato. Big money, Soviet. Big money. Hey there, brother. Who's got the guts to fight big money? Yeah. So, Sargon, I'm looking at you, brother. Let's finish this revolutionary war once and for all. You know what they say tomato, tomato, get in the ring. Where are you? A coward.